You got it? That was me just talking out loud. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, welcome, welcome. So this is the money making productivity actions. Um, like I was saying in the beginning with you guys, I spoke at a festival and what kind of sparked this presentation is I was speaking at this festival right here, Lighting a Bottle of, a couple of weeks ago. And I invited everyone uh, to to join me to talk about the actions because there my my presentation was the power of your subconscious mind to attract. So I was talking about the formula, which, you know, actually I have, I don't it's not next, but I'll show you the formula, but a part of it is the actions. So primarily we went into thoughts in it throughout that presentation. So I wanted to show you guys and them the action steps uh, on making money. So let's go ahead and get started here. So a little bit about me. These are some of the, some of the mentors that I have, whether it's through meeting them in person, reading their books, um, some of the people around me. So I've met people like Tony Robbins. Has anybody here ever heard of Tony Robbins? Yes. One person? Okay. Good enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lisa Nichols, she was in The Secret. Have you guys read that book or listened to that? Yes. It's a good one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. So Adam Markell. Uh, oh, Baloo left. He's probably like getting on and off. Um, Eric Thomas. Or maybe people are coming off an accident. Uh, Jason Stone. He's a millionaire mentor on Instagram and people like that. Uh, my highest value are experiences and it's helping people make money and uh, seeing that impact in people. In fact, uh, we have an office here in Orange. In fact, Angie's here. Actually, both Angie and Paul are here in the office. And so um, anybody that's out there, you guys are welcome to come into the office. We'll have live trainings and live presentations as well. And I also love to travel. So I've been to different places around the world. So this presentation, mainly I'm going to talk, talk about remote income that you can make money anywhere. That's the big, the big difference. So like I was saying with that formula, Alexander, mm -hmm. so here's the formula. And I got this from T. Harv Eker. He's a famous mentor as well. And he's going to start having uh, uh, trainings out here. After COVID, he kind of, uh, he's out of Canada. Um, some of the big trainings that they had, they kind of postponed them. So they're going to start doing that. The next one's in Ohio. And they're like three-day and one-week trainings. So is this formula, it's T, F, A equals R. So thoughts lead to feelings. Feelings lead to actions. Actions lead to results. And your results are, are what you are after or what you already have currently. So in that festival, like I mentioned, I went over this formula, but I went, delved in and talked about an hour into thoughts. In this case, we're going to talk about actions that lead to the results. Okay. But just so you guys know, um, Maybe I'll do another training separate from this to go over thoughts and feelings, because if you start doing actions, um, it's great and you'll get the results if you're consistent, but you have to be consistent about it. And normally, if if you're not in the in the habit of doing these type of things or you're not excited about it or you have the wrong thoughts about it, then you're not going to get the results. That's the thing. That's why I start from thoughts feelings actions okay so so let's get into this okay now before i get into some of the main actions i want to go over some some mental categories and some of the things that some of these other mentors say have you guys ever read cash flow quadrant by robert kiyosaki i have not but i was introduced to it through rich dad poor dad so you have read that book, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. How about you, Angie? No, I only heard about it, but I had no clue, really. Okay. So with Cash Flow Quadrant, I'm just going to quickly summarize this. So there's four different quadrants to make money that he talks about in that book. So there's employee, self-employed, big business, and investor. And 95% is on the left-hand side. In fact, pretty much most of that is, is as employees where they trade time for money. Why does that happen? Because what does the education uh, system teach us? They teach us 
to trade time for money, right? All of it, all of it is about that. In um, in high school, they teach us um, basically what do you want to be—a pilot, a doctor, and you know, attorney, whatever it is—and you learn English, um, you know, math, all the stuff that you have to learn, and then they get us ready for college to get into that realm. And in college, they basically teach us in that career. And but regardless of what career you choose, you're trading time for money. Okay. Then some people that want more control over their time, more control over their schedule, they become self-employed. The problem is you're still trading time for money. And a lot of people are still in that in that uh, type of category. Like Alexander, that's probably you. That's probably why you're looking at some of these other things, because even in what you're doing, you have to be the person to do it. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So, in fact, self-employed, like small businesses, the problem is who's waking up in the morning to open up the doors of the business, who's, you know, closing the doors of the business, who's doing the accounting, who's doing all of those things is that same person. So people that are self-employed, the problem is you're actually putting more time than you would at a normal nine to five. Make sense? Because there's pros and cons to everything, right? Even as an employee, the problem is you're trading time for money. But the good thing is that when you clock off, you don't have to think about your work, right? Somebody else is thinking about all that. Right. If somebody breaks in right to the office or, you know, the retail place that you work at, if you're an employee, it really doesn't matter. Right. You clocked in, you clocked out. It's not my problem. Right. Uh, the higher you go into management and all that stuff where it is your problem, then that's different. But when you're self-employed, everything's your problem. <laughs> right. So you're trading more time and you're trading more, with more problems. That's the thing that people don't see. But there are way, way higher ways to make money as a self-employed. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But we, we what we want to get is on the right-hand side, okay, is big business where you own a system, okay? Or you create a system or buy a system, right? If you buy a franchise, it's already set up for you. The problem is that it's normally hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? And how much is a McDonald's? I think it's like two point something million now to get mm -hmm. into one of those. But the big thing is now you're leveraging other people's time to make money. That's the big difference, Okay. In the definition that Robert Kiyosaki says, it's 500 employees or more is a big business, technically. Okay, But in my opinion, it's only the system and, and leveraging money and making it passively. Okay, And then last one is as an investor where you own investments and then your money's making money. Okay, What you want to do is be in, on the right-hand side. Okay, Oh, man, we have an angry guy. <laughs> I came in. Because people are going to come in randomly. <laughs> and come out randomly okay last thing on this okay what he teaches is your financial statement something that they don't teach in school okay so a financial statement is very simply income expenses assets and liabilities most people they know income and expenses but most people don't learn assets and liabilities okay well, welcome, Rick. I guess that's your name because he put it right there, Rick. So the poor and middle class, okay, they get a job and their money just goes to taxes, rent, transportation, and clothes, okay? And it's pretty much spent to look better, right, to look good. If you look at the money that they spend, like if you look at their their credit card statement or their, you know, their their, their statement, right? on their bank or their credit card, whatever they spend their money on, it's pretty much these things. And it's to look better or, you know, have have temporary, uh, you know, leisure time, right? Upper middle class, okay, they have maybe a, a better job, but the big difference is they put their money into liabilities, okay? So still to look good, but a little bit different. So they have liabilities like mortgage, car loans, credit card debt, school loans. And so that creates the monthly expenses, right? So taxes, mortgage payments, car payments, credit card payments, school payments. And so the problem is that they have a, a better job, but all they're doing is using that money up to pay for expenses for a, a nicer lifestyle. Does that make sense? Yep. The last one, rich and wealthy, is income from your job, also rental income, dividends, royalties, and profits, okay? 
And then expenses come from uh, liabilities as well, but it's a little bit different because you might have different mortgages, consumer loans and credit cards, and it might come from business. But the big things that the rich compared to everyone else does is they focus on assets. So the reason they even have these liabilities is because of their assets. That's the big difference. So assets like real estate, businesses, stocks, notes, bonds, IULs, things like that, that can that either goes up in value or they generate income. And so that goes over to the income side. So real estate, for example, creates rental income. Businesses, you know, uh, or stocks give you dividends and profits. And, you know, other things give you royalties. So you see the big difference? Everybody has access to the same stuff. It's whatever you focus on. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're not angry anymore, are you, Rick? <laughs> maybe he's still angry. Yeah, uh, maybe. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, as far as money, did you guys know that everybody has a different money, uh, money blueprint? It's kind of like a thermostat. Okay. So you know how when you go into a room and it has a certain thermostat, let's just say it's you know, set at seventy-five. Um, if you open up the window and it's cold, the cold comes in, the thermostat kicks in, right? If it goes down the degrees, so then it kicks in and then it raises it up. Same thing if it was the opposite. If it's hot outside and you open up the window, or actually it's hot outside and you don't open up the window because it's still hot, um, that thermostat will kick in and it'll raise it to whatever that temperature is set at, okay? The same thing is happening in your life as far as money. That's why, have you guys ever heard of the people that win the lottery? They win a bunch of money and then they say uh, over the next two years to five years, they're pretty much back at the same position. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not the money that made them rich. It's whatever was, you know, the knowledge that they had about money. And so all they know how to do is spend money. So guess where they're at? <laughs> they go back to the, the same position just with, you know, maybe a few cars or whatever, right? Whatever type of gadgets they bought from it. So the big question is, what is your current money blueprint set for? And can you tell? So just you can look at the results that you have. So it might be 25000 a year, 50000 a year, 75000 a year, 100, 200, $500,000, maybe a million dollars a year. Whatever that number is, is the result of your own blueprint. And you can change it, uh, but it has to do with your beliefs. Okay. Now, today is not about that. that that's a whole nother class. But I just want you guys to, since we're talking about money um, and remote income, whatever you're set as, it's what you're going to start doing. The thing that you really want to do, and I've talked to a friend about this, is make United States dollars, preferably, and, you know, whatever stat that you're, that you're at. Um, and if you're living in a country where it's half price, right, or 10%, and you're making that same money, then you, your lifestyle changes dramatically just because you're in another place. Okay, so let's start with remote active income. Okay, you guys ready? Nobody? Oh, yeah. Nobody's ready? Okay, one person's ready. It's always one person that's ready. Right. Rick is angry. So he's an angry guy, so I don't know if he wants to see any of this. Do you want to see this, Rick? I'm ready. <laughs> what do you do, Rick, and where are you coming from? I actually met you at the, the festival. Oh, finally, somebody from the festival. Everybody else was from the meetup. Oh, yeah. No, I, I was that guy. That's why I put my name like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Angry guy. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I, I drive trucks and I uh, I do a funeral escorts on the side. Yeah, yeah. I remember. But you say angry guy because you were angry. What was the exercise that I had mentioned where you said you were angry? Uh, you were you were talking about uh like manifesting like putting emotion towards purpose or things something like that. I didn't catch your whole thing. I, I came in towards the end, but uh, I was telling you how I kind of did like I didn't use positive energy. Uh, I used like anger, <laughs> I guess. Oh yeah, to buy your first uh, house went, and stuff. Yeah, 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 wow. yeah. That's true. Okay, well I'm gonna give you some some interesting knowledge. You might get angry that most people don't know this. Okay? So okay. remote active income, okay? making money anywhere in the world. Now, I didn't have enough time to make it pretty and put like nice photos. So I'm just going to 
tell you what it is, okay? First thing yeah, you could do is rent out your time by the hour, okay? Now, right now, everybody's doing that anyway, right? When you go get a job, what are you doing? You're trading your time for money, okay? The big difference is you can do this anywhere on the world if you do it right. And there's a lot of different websites where you can do that, okay? So a few that you might want to write down if you want to do it this way is Fiverr and Upwork.com and Freelance.com, okay, where you can rent out per hour depending on what you're good at or what you would like to do. Because there's businesses, companies out there that, you know, whatever you're good at, they're willing to pay you and they don't mind. I mean, as long as you have an internet access, you can do it from anywhere in the world. You know, I've been a part of a lot of businesses and companies where, you know, nobody even has to come into the office anymore, okay? Now, especially with what happened with COVID, people got really used to Zoom and 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 doing things offline, okay? So renting out your time by the hour is something that you can do. Now, you can go directly to a company, one company that will pay you per hour, you know, or a salary. But what I'm talking about, if you want more flexibility around your time, um, and maybe you don't have as many, you know, let's say skills in one area, um, you can literally just uh, put a few ads up on these websites, freelance.com, like I mentioned, Upwork and Fiverr. And there's people that do just that, okay? The next one, rent out your time by the project, okay? Now, there's a big difference between these two. You can probably see already, right? <laughs> now, let me give you an example of a project, okay? Now, years ago, when real estate went down, I actually went back to school and I learned web and graphic design, okay? So there was people that were willing to pay me for a project. In my case, it was websites, okay? And I combined it with graphic design. So I gave them, a, I created full packages and that was my project, right? To put that together for them. But it was a website, business cards, card magnets, whatever that is, you know, that project, okay? That's just in that realm, but there's a lot of different other projects. But basically it's whenever this thing is done, is created, okay? You guys see the big difference between that? So it's kind of like a gig or a project. So again, you can, there's people, there's companies that put up projects and they get bids uh, for people to finish the, or create these projects or do these projects. I just gave you an example of web design, but there's a lot of people that, that need projects done in a lot of different realms. Okay. Um, could, does anybody have any examples of that? That way it's not just me talking. Any Maybe other like projects project, that you can think like of? Renovating a home and you have to go in there and gather all the people that specialize in something yeah. to get a house renovated. There you go. Well, that one's not really remote, but yeah, exactly oh, what remote, I mean by remote. project. Yeah. That's exactly what I mean by project for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you can kind of do that remotely, actually, because you mm -hmm. can interview somebody through Zoom, uh, somebody that's near the project and hire them remotely. You know, I've actually done something similar come to think about oh, cool. it yeah like right now i remotely manage a property in mexico so you know i have a cleaning person and i have a handyman person so i have different people that i hired um and so i manage it remotely right and yeah. it's a project mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that i manage so i get paid you know for the project you know right like hire a property management company to come out and do everything and you just interview them and go from well there. Yeah. Well, in this case, the what I'm talking about is you being the project manager. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's another that's another step up, right? If you're the mm -hmm. owner and you can hire somebody to do the project for you, of course. Mm -hmm. Cool. Any questions before I move on? This is this is pretty cool, guys. Um because you can actually create an entire business and you guys don't even know this because this will blow your mind. You can create a business in anything and not even know it. <laughs> That's the crazy part. Originally, just so you guys know, and I don't tell everybody this, but um, years ago when I started in web and graphic design, I actually started doing projects for people without knowing web design. <laughs> All right. And the way I did it is I hired people that knew what to do and I started managing the projects. Then somebody had wrote me, uh, you know, and went back and forth. And so I just decided to go back. To, I went to school and I learned it. So that way I could do it too. But it was mainly because whatever you start, you know, making money at, and, and you know, you want to get, uh, you, know, you want to get involved in every part of it. But it doesn't mean that you need to necessarily know it. 
Okay, there's a lot of, let's say, for example, real estate investors that don't know, that don't even own a hammer, let's say, but they rehab. How they hire construction to do it, right? They just have to be on title. Okay. So that's per project. Next one is monthly subscription model. Okay. This is another way to get paid. Um, so instead of, of hourly or per project, you can get paid per month, right? Another name for this is salary, right? But when you're talking to clients um, directly and you're doing this as a business, then it's actually a monthly subscription that you're doing. If you get hired by a person or multiple people, it's a salary, right? So can anybody give me an example or a few examples of monthly subscription models where you can make money? Only fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> something that you can do right now Rick. <laughs> are you really going to do only one <laughs> you're funny <laughs> oh man that's funny that's the first thing that you thought of any ideas Angie only fans <laughs> no. oh my gosh <laughs> All right. I started it sorry <laughs> yeah you did okay I'll give you some examples okay uh, my service on the web design, back to the web design, I would charge uh, $100, $200 a month okay? because I would host the website. I would make chain, you know, updates free of charge or whatever. So that's one monthly subscription. If I had 200 times 10 clients, that's $2,000 a month. Okay. 100 clients, that's $20,000 a month. Make sense? Welcome, uh, Kristen Martinez. You have my last name. I'll let you borrow it for today. <laughs> all right um let's see another so another example is social media manager so if you were a social media manager can you charge per month 500 bucks a thousand bucks a month of course yeah. right and so that's a monthly subscription model okay i mean yeah it's kind of like a salary you're getting a, a monthly income but the reason i'm calling it a monthly subscription is because you're getting a subscription from the client whether it's a business employer or the client, the end user it's himself, you get a monthly income. Um, and from there, you just kind of you do what you need to do, what needs to be done, almost like the project. Um, and then the next part is you can hire somebody to take care of that, right? Once you like, let's say, for example, social media manager, you can become a social media manager, um, then hire two or three virtual assistants. And guess who's actually doing the work, right? But you have to manage the projects, see, making sure everything's done, and talk to the client. But you're based on, and you get paid based on a monthly subscription model. Make sense? Yes. Are you a little less angry now, Rick? <laughs> yeah, I'm a good time now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but guys, do they teach any of this in school? No. <laughs> Absolutely just... not. They just show us how to trade time for money, right? Kristen, can you hear me? I don't know if you can unmute yourself or... This is more of a conversation with all of us, especially... I mean, if there was a thousand people in here, of course, I wouldn't be able to do this. But there's only five of us. Why not? Uh, and he decided, <laughs> he decided to go. <laughs> okay. All right, next one. Passive income. Now let's get into the passive income part. What I showed you right now is active income, remote active income. And then um, Rick had mentioned something where, you know, managing a project, you kind of have to be there a little bit more physically. But now this one's passive. So passive meaning that you really don't have to physically do it yourself. Okay. Now, renting out your time by the hour. Okay. I already mentioned that on the active. But here's something really cool that a lot of people don't know, okay? And it's really going to surprise you, <laughs> okay? You can do the same thing. Go and, and look on these same websites, okay? Upwork, Freelance. Uh, there's a lot of other places. I mean, literally Craigslist, if you wanted to. There's people that will hire you even per hour to do certain things, right? So if they're going to pay you, let's say right here, uh, right now in California, what's the minimum well, the minimum wage? 15. 15 an hour? I think so. Okay. Now, for a lot of the things that I do, I can hire somebody out in the Philippines and Colombia and different countries. What do you think the minimum wage is 
by higher up. Okay. On the other on the other other side of the world, outside, there it's just straight bidding. Okay. Um, so there is no minimum wage. Okay, that was a trick question. So I pay people depending on what country, right? Um, anywhere from three dollars to ten dollars an hour. Okay. So even at the high end, okay, let's just say ten dollars an hour. If you're paying somebody that's actually better than you at it, okay. I'm just gonna put it to you that way because there's some people that are better than me on some things where I'm getting paid 15 bucks per hour and then I'm paying them ten dollars an hour to do that then how much am I making per hour? Five bucks. Yeah, five dollars for doing what though? Nothing. <laughs> Is that a good deal or what? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Is anybody here doing this? Probably no. not, you know? But it's only because you didn't know before, right? That's what me and Rick were talking about. That's why he got so angry because he didn't know about this stuff because he was ripping his hair and, and working harder in, in his case, really for buying a house, working harder and not smarter. Okay. But there's people that do this all day, guys. And it's kind of like a cheat code, right? That not, not a lot of people know about. Welcome, uh, Mohan. I don't know if I said that right. Yeah, you were right. Okay, cool. Where are you from, Mohan? San Jose, California. Okay, cool. Well, welcome. I can't ask too many questions because then they'll they'll leave, I guess. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> All right. Next one, rent out your time by the project that we talked about. And then you just hire a team that work on these projects and you get the difference. Basically, what I'm talking about here is nowadays it's called arbitrage. Have you guys ever heard of the, the name arbitrage? Yeah, like through drop shipping. Yeah, it it became famous in drop shipping because you don't you don't have to hold the items, and you can actually get the the end then money and then use that to buy whatever you're getting. So you arbitrage it, you middleman it, is what we used to say. Now we arbitrage it. Okay, so in this case, you're arbitraging uh, projects or your time. Okay, so same thing. You know, you get a project. And then you hire your team to do the project for less. Okay. So you're literally, it's like a project management business that you created in, you know, over thin air. And you don't have to go and get an LLC. You don't have to create a website. You know, you start doing it. And then if you want to become more, more branded, like if you like doing it and stuff, then obviously you can start doing that. Create a website for yourself and start branding yourself and you'd get more, more of those projects. Make sense? Next one, rent out your expertise. Um, everybody here is good at something or multiple things, okay? For me, I'm good at too many things, I would say, okay? And I think Angie knows. So for me, I didn't tell you guys this, but I'm a California licensed real estate broker. I'm a California licensed uh, mortgage loan originator, so I can do loans. I'm a California licensed uh, life insurance um, broker. So I can do life insurance and annuities. I'm a California license. Um, technically, I, I, I use it for solar, but technically I can do it for anything with home improvement with the HIS license, right, Angie? Yeah. So I have an HIS license. Um, let's see, what else? I'm a real estate investor and business owner. So I've owned multiple businesses, about 10 businesses altogether. and physical businesses. So I've owned a phone repair shop. I've owned a car business, um, um, car like trucking business. So physical businesses. So what I've done is I've rented out um, whatever your expertise in. So for me, I have too many expertise in my opinion. <laughs> so my expertise was in different stuff. So years ago, when I was an ambassador to the city chamber of commerce, uh, before I started owning a bunch of businesses, um, I would show people how to grow their own business, right? How to get an LLC, how to create their website and all that stuff. So that was my expertise. So I would rent out that. I would do consultations, right? So whatever you can charge as a, con you know, doing consultation on is whatever you can do. So if you were buff, guess what you can do? Personal training, right? And do consultations with that, okay? Um, Alexandra, I'm guessing with video, 
you know, video editing, you want to get out of it, but you have the expertise in it because you have the experience. So you can literally create a, you know, a website or at least a Facebook like page um, and say, hey, you do business consulting for video editing. If you want to learn how to get into that business and there's people that want to get into that business. Would you agree? That's a great you know? idea. Yeah. So you can literally charge whatever or, you know, split, split some projects with them. And show them how to do it. And all of a sudden, you'll start getting video editing, even though you don't, you don't want it. <laughs> but you can have them do it, right? Right. Or you can hire other people to do it, <laughs> right? They could be anywhere. You can get Philippines people, you know, people from the Philippines, wherever. They or India or whatever. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So however you want. I mean, you have two businesses right there that you're not doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so in whatever expertise that you already have, okay? Angie, I know you're very uh, spiritual. I know you haven't done this, but can you do, I mean, you have expertise in that. Every time I talk to you, you talk about something with spiritual, right? So there's people that do that, right? I mean, they get into it, right? With uh, cleansing spiritually, uh, doing cards, doing all kinds of stuff, consultations. They'll do um, project-based stuff, right? So we'll, uh, well, in Espanol, in, in Spanish, it's, you know, te, te hago una limpia en la casa, right? For whatever amount of money. I mean, I don't know how deep you want to get into that business, but there's a lot of yeah, stuff yeah, within I mean, spiritual that, yeah, that I somebody. Do that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you but you know about it, right? Yeah, I understand a little. The cleansing, I understand only so little. Yeah, well, whatever part of spiritual that you know, you have expertise in it. Yeah. It's more like yeah, it's something else, but yes, like reading <laughs> the energy. Yeah. Reading well, that's spiritual. It's, yeah, yeah, whatever that is. It is, people are, yeah. yeah, people are willing to pay, but you have to understand sales too. So I'll have a whole nother class on sales. But like I was showing a, a holistic doctor, he does consultations and he does good stuff, but he doesn't know how to sell. So I've been teaching him how to sell and how to sell from stage. And he was just surprised. Like it's all about asking questions and putting value first. If you don't put value on what you're doing, then people are, that's what they're going to pay, right? You didn't put value to it. So you have to put a value to it. Okay. Like reading people, like people knowing what they're, you know, what more than likely is going to happen. It depends on the value you put into it. Right. All right. Next one, rent out storage space. Okay. This one gets a little, you have to be here, although you can remotely do it later, but if you have extra storage space, you can rent that out. There's some websites that do that. I was actually going to start putting that, but um, I didn't have time, but you guys can Google literally, you know, rent out storage space. Okay. So if you have an extra garage or an extra space or an extra like place to park, believe it or not, people are willing to pay to park stuff in different places for it to be safe. Okay. Cause it's cheaper. I mean, think about how much a storage place costs. Have you guys ever gone and, and seen the prices or paid? Okay. I, I did it. I think last year I stored some stuff and it was only like, I think it was a five by five. It was very small and I was paying like almost $200 a month. You know, just for that amount of space. So people that have a house or even if you're renting and you have a part of your garage, um, even if you're starting off, think about it. You're 18. Well, let's just say 21, 21 years old, renting a, a spot and you have like a little small space of garage. You can start making money with that. Right. Next one, rent out your car. Um, over the weekend, I was talking to somebody and um they have a testimonial of a guy that's renting out, I think, four cars, three or four cars. And he and he's making enough money to leave his job just from renting out cars. OK, mm -hmm. so there's there's money in doing that. OK. Man, some people cannot stay for long, huh? <laughs> we could jump in and out. All right. So renting out your car. Uh, I know the website, though, on this one. It's Turo. OK, T-U-R-O. So if you have an extra car, there's a couple of guidelines, but you can rent it out um, and you can literally make money. And some people literally create fleets of cars to do just this and they leave their jobs, walk away. It's kind of like Airbnb, but car, right? And not being there. Okay. Because some people compare it to Uber, but Uber, you have to go and do Uber, right? Uber and live like you are the taxi person, right? You're the person behind the wheel. The big difference is this when you're letting them use your car and you're doing your own thing, you're doing something else. So you can do this to a second car, a third car, or you can just stay home or stay at the office and rent it out over the weekend and just stay home, right? And make money while you're at home working on other stuff and you're not going to use your car. It might make you ride your bike. Who knows, right? 
Any questions on any of these, by the way? I know I'm going a little fast. It's good. It's good. That's pretty they good. have one for motorcycles too, like Toro. There you go. Motorcycles. Can't remember the name though. Yeah. Basically, these days, I don't know if you guys know this, but we're in an information age and we're in a like a swapping type of um how can I say this? People don't want to own and buy all these things. They'd rather rent because everything's getting more expensive. You know, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to be going camping next month. And instead of buying, I mean, how much is an RV? All right. A hundred thousand dollars, right. For a nice one. When I can go rent one for two, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars for the week, which one's cheaper to do, especially if I've never used it, you know, so it's happening in everything. Right. So with with uh, the car people i mean people when they travel they do that anyway right next one rent out your spare room right so if you guys have an extra spare room or if you don't make one right <laughs> um and this is how i started an airbnb by the way i have an airbnb portfolio um but i don't do it per room obviously anymore i do entire cabins and condos and stuff but you can rent out start this is how i got started just to see and feel it out right uh, you can rent out a room and you can pick and choose, right? Whoever's coming. And people like that because people are coming from sometimes around the world and they like talking to somebody, seeing, you know, what there is to do in that city, right? Whatever city you are. And, you know, the funny part is when I first started this, I lived in Rialto. I don't know if you guys know where Rialto is, but I lived in Rialto and I thought in my mind, I'm like, okay, who comes to Rialto to vacation, right? <laughs> Like I'm bare, I'm rarely going to rent this thing out. Okay. Uh, but I figured, you know what, if I can make some extra money in the spare room and then obviously when it's not rented and I have family or something, then, or friends, then I'll block it off. That was my mindset, right? Guess what happened? Take a wild guess, Alexander. Every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It rented for the next two months <laughs> wow. in Rialto. Like what the heck is there to do in Rialto? But um, since they were there, I asked them like, hey, so what do you do? Like, what made you want to, you know, rent? So I have a guy that was there. Uh, he was working a job in Rancho Cucamonga in the city over. Well, two cities over. And he needed to work a job for like two months. It was like electricity, like going up in the poles. And then he was going to go to Victorville. And he said, man, there's not enough like Airbnbs or like, you know, places out there. Um, and like hotels are too expensive and then they don't have access to certain amenities. So it made sense to do Airbnb. So I was like, oh, man, that, that makes a lot of sense. Then the other guy that was there a month, because literally both people did a full month. Um, it wasn't like, I mean, they paid the whole month. I don't know what else to tell you. So the other guy was there in between apartments. I think it was like him and, and a girlfriend. So they were literally in between apartments. So and then as soon as they got one, then. And they went to it. So so I thought to myself, you know what? This is not like Airbnb. It's not just about vacations. I That's what I really thought it was. It's literally a transitional, uh, you know, sleeping somewhere, a transitional type of app. Okay. So all of you guys that have a spare room, it doesn't matter where it's at. It can literally be in the desert and people will rent it out. That's the crazy part that shocked me about, you know, Airbnb. There's Airbnb, Verbo. There's a lot of different different websites. I can I can do a full presentation on just this one. Okay, actually, on end of any one of them. Okay, any questions on this? No. So, do okay. you guys have any spare bedrooms? No. 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 Okay. No. Put up some walls. Convert a bed. Uh, you know, a garage or or something. <laughs> you know, you laugh, but my mom did it. <laughs> my mom converted the garage, mm -hmm. uh, in ADU, and then uh, she had a second living room. She closed it up put a put a door on the outside put a kitchenette in there and a restroom um actually that one i think had the restroom already yeah that She's one had that one had the restroom closed it off but put the kitchenette and literally created a fourplex out of the house okay so it's doable okay well with the spare bedroom it's easier right all right next one is rent out spare office space okay um, some people have an office and you can spare. Um, and by the way, all of these, you can kind of arbitrage too, like what we talked about. Uh, I'll give you my example. Okay. Oh, actually with this one too, spare rooms or, or full houses, you can air arbitrage. You, you don't buy the house, you rent it 
and then you rent out, um, you know, to Airbnb. Make sense? Uh, you can, you might be able to do the same thing on a spare bedroom uh, type of thing, but you really have to get permission. That's a little harder to do on a on a per bedroom because then the landlord's there the whole time. It's easier if you get the whole place and then you rent it out. Um, and this is a way to get free uh, where you don't have to pay for your living space. Because if you rent a place that you want to live in and you live there and then you get extra bedrooms, now you can rent out two or three bedrooms, right? And you can start doing this Airbnb arbitrage and you're renting the whole time. You're not owning, okay? On the office space, it's the same thing. Now, Angie is, is my witness because she's here in the office. Angie, how big is the place? Like 3,000 square feet, right? Oh Yes, it's huge. Yes, it has yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine offices plus two or three conference areas. Yeah, so there's eleven suites basically inside. Okay. Yeah. So I have, yeah, so I rented a full three thousand square foot office space that has eleven suites in it. So office space, and then I turned. I had, originally I turned three of them into conference rooms and I turned, you know, one back into an office, uh, long story, <laughs> but, um, so two of them are conference rooms, like she mentioned the rest of them. I'm actually, well, two of them I'm renting per hour. And then the rest of them I'm renting per month subscription based, but basically I'm renting out spare office space, aren't I? So I'm arbitraging cause I'm renting, you know, the 3,000 square feet, but then I'm renting out every, it's really 11 by 11 on each suite. Yeah. And, um, and so it pays for itself, you know, it pays for itself. And I still have access to the training room, conference room, second conference room, and then the other hourly. So really four, yeah, four other, four other spots. Other suites. That, if I were to rent out everything, then I'd be really cash flowing at that point. Mm -hmm. What was that? Where, where is that? Orange. City of Orange. City of Orange. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If um, you want to come by, you can see. Let, let, let's connect. I have somebody who's looking for an office at the moment. So, see, see there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you have tools, you can rent them out. Basically, anything that people don't want to buy and they want to rent um they'll do right i just talked to somebody earlier they'll they have like a big trash trailer and mm -hmm. they'll go and leave it at somebody's spot they'll put trash and then they'll go pick it up so they'll rent out the trash truck basically for them to put trash in this case tools if you have tools you can put them up on craigslist and rent them out and mm -hmm. make money as well all right any questions on any of this no it sounds pretty good yeah what i'm getting at is you can make money with anything and with anything you already know, especially now with the internet, okay? Now, to take it up another notch, um, I'm going to invite you guys next Tuesday to the Zoom I have, uh, June 27th, which is next Tuesday. It's a few days before I leave to Colombia, so I'm going to give you guys everything that I possibly can. This one is more on what you talked about, Alexander. So I'm going to go into tax-free retirement strategies, uh, real estate strategies, business strategies, asset protection, asset protection strategies, and no market exposure strategies. Within the divisions that we have within real estate, mortgages, life insurance, solar, and those type of things. So it's on a bigger realm. It's not for everybody. Uh, the reason I went into remote income and like international stuff is because at the festival, people come from all over the world. So I wanted something to have to, you know, more for them. Make sense? Like outside of California. But everything that I'm going to talk about here, it's much more bigger. Okay. And it's bigger money. What time hey, on Tuesday? Tuesday at, oh, I didn't put that on here. Huh? <laughs> uh, Tuesday, same, same time, 6.30 p.m. It'll be here in the office, but I'll do it through Zoom. Uh, Alexander, where are you looking? And uh, Rick, where are you guys located? I'm in Duarte next to Monrovia. You are, is it 40 minutes away, Orange? From you? I think so. Maybe. I don't know. Monrovia. Um, Monrovia. It's like uh, right after 605, in the, where the 605 and the 210 split. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're up there. Okay. How about you, Rick? 
angry guy, Rick. <laughs> you are. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, where are you located? I'm in uh, Chino. You're in Chino? Okay. You are like 30 minutes away. Yeah, it might be easier for Zoom for you guys. Um, <clears throat> Where's your office located? I have two offices, one in Orange and one's in Rialto. You're probably closer to the Rialto one, actually. Mm. But Rialto one is it's set up more of like a small processing center. Actually, Angie, you've been there, huh? Yeah. yeah. It's a little tinier. That one's only like 800 square feet. Um, all right. So I'll, I'll do that Zoom. Are you guys excited about that? That's way bigger money. And I'm going to show you guys how to buy real estate with zero down. Okay. That's what I'm interested in. Yeah. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll talk about, I talk a lot about real estate. Um, and there's some strategies that's going to surprise you that it's basically what the wealthy utilize. Um, all the strategies that they utilize, like you're not, like when I learned it, I was I actually got mad because I'm like, why don't they teach this at all? Like whatsoever. The the 1% wealthy, they learn it from the friends, the rich friends that they have uh, or wealthy consultants, and they teach that to their kids. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Other than that, you really don't learn it. So, and, and you got to really be careful what advice you're getting, like who you're getting advice from. So for example, like if you're, you know, foreclosure, we're actually, Alexander, you were talking about foreclosures, right? Mm -hmm. If you think about it from the shoes of a foreclosure, because I talk about foreclosure, actually, a lot of the properties that I've bought is through foreclosure, okay? So I'm actually a foreclosure expert. Oh, um, so we can talk about that as well. But with foreclosure, if you're in those shoes and you want to get out of foreclosure and you go and you talk to, let's just say, a bankruptcy attorney, okay? And you talk 30 minutes, an hour, what do you think they're going to convince you of? bankruptcy right that's what they do right. you know if, if you talk an hour you have a cons consultation with the real estate agent what do you think they're going to convince you of I, they're going to they're going to convince you to sell your house because that's how I, they make their I, money mm -hmm. uh if you talk to an investor they're going to want to give you cash for keys right so mm -hmm. depending on the area of you know of expertise that they do that's what they're going to basically convince you on Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see one of the things that we do is we'll sit down with people and we go over all of their options. It doesn't matter what it is because we have so many divisions, we can help them in different realms. Um, and it's really to help them and it's really their choice. Um, I mean, I give suggestion, they should do this, this and that, it depends, but I don't push them to sell. I don't push, you know, for like me to buy. It depends on their situation. And I try to get more money in their pocket. Okay, when I when I uh, structure a real estate deal, yeah, which the zero down that I mentioned, when I structure those, I normally structure them zero down, and you'll see why it's a win-win. Okay. Um. All right. Let me stop the recording.